everybody, it's Flake. I got a magic deck that I've been sort of toying with for a little while now. Uh, it's called Carnfire. I guess it's the version 2.0 of the deck. And it's made with um, Karn in mind with a Banefire finisher, but it's made to kind of frustrate your opponent a lot and really limit the tools that they can uh, use to win and give you some time and uh, even potentially a pretty hefty board in order to give your opponent fits. So this is Carnfire 2.0. All right, so the deck as it exists is fairly straightforward from the most part. I mean, it's kind of like a mono black control without the mono-ness of it. I guess that's how you can say it. It uses the Cabal Stronghold to really amplify your Banefire at the end of the game. Uh, I've pulled off 19 um, point hits with the Banefire. You can even go even further with that. But at the same time, you're also using treasure maps and... Um, Fountains of Renewal to stay in the game, cycle through your deck as best you can, and eventually use your Karn as also an engine piece to cycle and uh, otherwise get the cards you need. So we'll just go through the deck list real quick and then I'll talk to you about the choices and what the, the basic strategy is. So we are going from right off the top here, we'll go with two times Fungal Infection. And the reason why I put Fungal Infection in here is because there was a lot of mono blue um and also uh you know green threats uh, as well as as uh you know mono white weenies or mono red their fungal infection is one of those cards that uh usually for most people survives till the last cut uh but it's a very very effective card for making unfavorable trades for your opponent early on or just developing the board if your opponent throws down a um a terramander on turn one, you can smoke it right away. If your opponent's attacking you with something mono red wise, you can use the fungal infection to make a favorable trade. At the same time, you can get rid of a Lanwar Elf right off the bat or deal with one of those exploring merfolk before they get to get the counters on them. So fungal infection uh, definitely has a place in here. Four times Fountain of Renewal. Now this is not just to keep you uh, in a status of gaining health constantly and uh, you know to stay in the game and give you longevity so you can get to your win condition but the fountain of renewal also helps for uh, putting extra artifacts on the board so that your Karn's constructs can be beefier as uh, the game progresses so this is good also late game you can go ahead and cycle it through get rid of it if you need to draw some cards Bay and Fire, self-explanatory, two copies. This is your win condition. You want to play this late game uh, when you have uh, some Cabal Strongholds uh, ready to go. Really amplify it and, uh, you know, smoke your opponent down for 15, 16 potential damage all the way up to even one tap in them for 20, if that's the case. All right, Argyle's Bloodfast. This is one of the cards that can probably go in or out, doesn't matter. It's in there mainly in order to get uh, get some card draw. Uh, you're, you're also able to uh, sacrifice a creature gain life equal to its toughness later on uh, when this thing is flipped, if it ever gets to the point where, you're, where it's flipped. Probably don't recommend it too much, but uh, it's, it's an option. But this thing can uh, really uh, turn the tides when it's flipped and um, swapping in for the... Um, uh, creatures that you create with your construct or possibly also the ones that you steal with Angrath. That's another thing that we got to keep in mind. So Argyle's Bloodfast is in there as well. Three times cast down. Again, cheap removal for a wide variety of creatures on the board. Uh, I've got uh, three times Moment of Craving. It's removal as well, but it also allows you to go ahead and get some uh, get some life back that you might have lost early on. Great against the Mono Reds and the White Weenies that uh, plague the world right now. Uh, four times Treasure Map. Again, Cycling the board, creating treasure tokens to get either access to red mana if you don't have it, or to create more mana for your uh, amplified and big time bane fires. At the same time, more treasure tokens means bigger Karn constructs, so keep that in mind. All right, two times Cry of the Carnarium. Again, a big board sweep. This has actually worked really well against Phoenixes, against Arc Light Phoenixes uh, that play, you know, Phoenixes that constantly come back and come back and come back. Cry of the Carnarium will kill those phoenixes and banish them forever, or it'll just be a nice, um, delicious board wipe against a blue or, uh, sorry, a white or red uh, weenies deck. So this is a really good one uh, to throw in there. I got two copies of that. Bedevil. Bedevil is a removal spell that I threw in here because of its um, wide variety of targets, either an artifact, a creature, or a planeswalker. The planeswalker is probably 
what I'm looking at most, but there are sometimes artifacts that really cause you some trouble, especially if you're going up against a Immortal Sun. Immortal Sun will pretty much put the brakes on your deck's progress and will stop you flat in your, uh, you know, right in your, your path over there. So Bedevil is uh, in there for three copies. Ritual of Soot against early game protection. This will wipe out a board full of, plain, uh, of um, wild growth walkers and branch walkers and uh, jade light rangers that um you know those uh sultai decks and decks that just cram in uh exploration and big time creatures early on that will deal with them post haste these ritual of soots are really devastating against a lot a lot of creatures now again a little expensive but uh majorly effective uh, I've got three times Vraska's Contempts. Again, this is to deal with big creatures, things like Arclight, um, not Arclight Phoenixes, sorry, Rekindling Phoenixes that are pains in the ass. Anything that you suspect might come back uh, or out of the graveyard uh, or, plane, or uh, Planeswalkers that give you uh, headaches. Vraska's Contempt is really good. All right, now let's get to the meat. Uh, actually, I'm going to talk to you about quickly about Eldest Reborn. Again, two copies. Um, this is one that I might throw more in uh, and take out maybe a cast down or a moment of craving and throw this in or even a bedevil and throw in an eldest reborn uh, This is good once you start clearing the board and keeping things uh, at bay the eldest reborn could be thrown down to either uh, you know snipe a uh, um, a planeswalker or get rid of a uh, Carnage tyrant or something to that effect. So eldest reborn is pretty good uh, and I've got two copies of it there now three times Karn I used to play four. I took it out because of the fact that there is uh, other things that you need in the deck. And I think that I used to play four uh, Karns and four Angrath. And I thought that those two extra copies of cards could have been better used for early game protection. But three Karns, uh, you're going to be throwing these down in order to look for cards and build up some uh, rapport. Big up a, a, a tall loyalty counter on it. And what you're going to do with it is eventually, and once you start drawing the cards you need, uh, you're going to be um, with the Fountains of Renewal on the board, with the treasure map, uh, treasure uh, the treasure tokens on the board. Going minus two on Karn is kind of um, part of the strategy as well. You don't just want to be using Karn to fish for cards. You could also use them for some board protection. Um, going minus two on Karn with a couple of those artifacts on the board, it gets really out of hand really quick. He could be a 4-4 four, four, or a 5-5 five, five right off the bat, but if you put another one on the board, that's a double 6-6s six, or a triple 7-7. Seven, seven. So Karn is great for the card draw. It's great for finding the cards uh, that you need, but also it's great for just creating a board presence that your opponent might not be able to deal with. Obviously, there's a lot of issues when you're playing with just tokens, things like Deputy of Detention or any type of... Um, um, uh, something like Ritual of Soot against you, uh, those could be really, really spooky. So Karn uh, is one of those, you're going to have to sort of gauge, do you want to create um, minions or do you want to go ahead and throw down a little bit more uh, of cycling and card draw? Now Angrath, Angrath is fantastic and this is a card I really, really, really like and um, it's a shame that he's going to be uh, dipping out of the meta real soon and uh, being rotated out, but Angrath is essentially uh, a fantastic plus one because you're basically forcing your opponent to uh, chuck cards out of his hand and take two damage. At the same time, his minus three is pretty dang spectacular because it targets things like um, it, it'll give you, uh, you'll be able to steal rather, you'll be able to steal your opponent's um, jellyfish. My God, I cannot uh, think of the, the hydroid crisis. There it is. Uh, you're stealing your opponent's hydroid crisis and then destroying it afterwards. This Angrath is an immense threat against a lot of creatures that kind of get out of control. Jade Light uh, Rangers as well, or as uh, Wild Growth Walkers and things of, of, of that ilk. Uh, Angrath will steal it, slam it, and then kill it. At the same time, just a plus one on, of discarding a card and losing life forces your opponent to not hold on to cards in his hand. If he's playing on top deck, he'll have to either play what he has or lose it. At the same time, uh, Angrath's minus eight down the road gets really, really juicy. Your opponent uh, will have you know, 15, 20 cards in the uh, graveyard. This minus eight threat is pretty damn significant. Uh, so that's how that's been going. Uh, he tends to really um, fish out a lot of your opponent's damage. He's uh, a high threat on the board. Uh, paired up with Karn and some protection spells, you can usually do a lot of damage with Angrath. Now, the strategy of this is basically throw down your Fountains of Renewal as you can, your treasure maps. Keep uh, your removal spells as best as you can for big threats that you know are coming. 
Uh, but I mean, it's very, very straightforward. What you want to be doing is hanging on to at least a bane fire for a finisher. Now, that's not the only win condition, of course. If you're uh, if you suspect your opponent is not really playing many minions, um, use your minus two on your card selectively. Form a board, make it strong, and eventually your opponent wear him down with angrath uh, angrath pings and that threat, and eventually down the road you'll be able to do some damage because you've got Cabal Stronghold with a bunch of swamps and some red mana in order to make your bane fire absolutely devastating and that's the name of the game Karn Fire it's not just a name it's a strategy so good luck with this deck I really like it and uh, it's a nice little shake up to what's going on so there it is that's the Karn Fire deck um, again a little bit different than what's being played today, but you don't have to always play to win. You can try some new stuff. I promise you you'll have fun playing this deck. If you like what you see, you can always go ahead and leave some comments in the comment field. Hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash watchflake, or on Twitter as well, at watchflake. And uh, yeah, I thank you so much for your comments and your words, and I will see you next time. Be kind to one another. I will see you soon. Adios.